to liberate the system and everything will fall into place, we have to remove Ruto from power. Let's not dance around this issue. The problem is at the top. The problem is at State House. With Ruto out of power, we can transform the system. The system below him will collapse on its own weight once he's removed from power. And the best way to remove Ruto from power, and this is documented, is patented historically since 1789, uh, the French Revolution, is people power. This is how it's been done. This is how the Bangladeshi did it. This is how the Sri Lankans did it. This is how every other society has done it. The only thing I would like to say is that um, these discussions need much more focus. Laser beam focus, as I always say, because if we are not singularly focused, uh, we will confuse the people and um, we will not be able to identify the principal problems and be able to design uh, strategies and tactics of solving them. So why do I say that? I have heard people talk as if uh, there was democracy and the Bill of Rights were, respect were respected and the rule of law was there before Ruto, or, or, or during Kibaki's reign, or that the only problem was Moi. And I think this, we have to be able to correct that misapprehension and misconception. Since the so-called independence, since 1963, there are basic things that have not changed and that need to be transformed. Um, and the reason why I say that is uh, the Kenyan state, and I've said this repeatedly, was not intended to empower the African citizen of Kenya. It was not meant for Africans. The Kenyan state was an extractive state that was only set up to extract raw resources, exploit the labor, and dominate the people. And the state was meant to have Africans as mascots, representing the international uh, interests of capital. So that when Ruto is there, his purpose and aim is to steal as much as he can, but ultimately to serve the metropole, Washington, um, London, Berlin, Paris, and these major capitals of the West. That is why when Ruto goes to New York, or he goes to Washington, D.C., or he goes to London, he can walk on the street, almost like a, an ordinary citizen. But he cannot do that in Kenya. Because in Kenya, is lord. is an imperial lord. But in London, where he has lords that are supposed to be giving instructions on what to do in Kenya, he can behave as an ordinary citizen. In Kenya, he has a motorcade the length of River Nile. Whereas in Washington, he carries his own umbrella. You can see the discordance between the behavior that these people exhibit in foreign countries vis-a-vis -vis how they behave in our own country. In our own country, they are slave masters and we are slaves. And in foreign countries, they are ordinary citizens. And this mentality, this structural defect, this structural set up is what has to be changed. That is why a lot of us are saying the problem is with the system. The problem is with the architecture, the architecture and the structure of the state. 
The problem is with the institutions that were set up not to serve us, not to accord us dignity, not to uh, preside over a democratic, fair, and just system, but to oppress us for as much as possible so that it is easier now to exploit us and to take the resources away from us. So what is the solution? I think it is wrong, and I know many people or some people will disagree with me, but I think it is fundamentally wrong to talk about the IBC, to talk about the police, to talk about uh, the judiciary, or any of these systems that were set up to preside over the state that I've just described. The entire system is rotten and cannot be reformed. If you set up an IBC today, Ruto will put his cronies, the likes of Sudi or people like him, so that when any election comes, whether you dissolve parliament or you don't, the people that will be elected will behave worse than the ones that you have currently. So you would have done absolutely nothing, zero. You would have scored at your own goal. If you say we reform the judiciary, so who presides over the reform? Who will appoint that person? It will be Ruto. So who do you think Ruto will appoint? Somebody worse than Kome. So that the system that was supposed to exploit you, that was supposed to repress you, is even more efficient. If you say we reform the police, who will appoint the committee that will preside over the reform? The same, same Ruto. Ultimately, my point is this. The main problem is a political problem. It is a structural problem. It is an institutional problem. And if we don't overhaul the existing state and structures, then you cannot solve the problem. We will be going round like fools forever. And this is what we have done since 1963. Yes, we have had struggles. And yes, we've had veterans of struggles. And I've been one of them that have been struggling. But we've achieved so little. For instance, we managed to stop Moi from continuing until he died. So he ended up saying, look, I repeal Section 2A and I reintroduce multi-party politics. But then they came around, mutated, and took over the multi-party politics. And they're the ones who have been controlling. So nothing much changed. Yes, the previous constitution, the old one, allowed Moi to detain us anytime he wanted, to torture us at Nyayo torture chambers anytime he wanted, to force as many people into exile as he wanted. And yes, we made sure that a new constitution came into being, which is what we have, the Constitution of Kenya 2010. And people died. Thousands of people died. Thousands of people were tortured. Thousands of people were exiled. Ngugi is still in exile, for example, right? I mean, Chelagat Mutai died a pauper because of it. Bildad Kagia died a pauper because of it. Pinto was murdered. So when we say there has been a, an ongoing struggle from 1963, we are not joking. Anybody who wants to say that, oh, only Gen Z started struggling, that person will have to be liberated from their colonial mentality. Many, many, many people have suffered to have us now be able to speak and challenge a sitting president the way that we are doing. But it's not been enough. So what is it we have to do? Because state capture is the norm, is the order of things. Adani will not go. Adani is actually Ruto. Uh, the courts will not be able to untangle all these things. This is not the work for judges. This is a political problem and you're not going to solve it through forming political parties. 
because the system, the electoral system, is completely um, colonized by Ruto and his group and others. The system is not free. So uh, the same way that Chebukati announced Ruto as president and uh, whether he won fairly or not is of no consequence. The fact is the system was rigged from day one. How do we liberate the system? To liberate the system and everything will fall into place, we have to remove Ruto from power. Let's not dance around this issue. The problem is at the top. The problem is at State House. With Ruto out of power, we can transform the system. The system below him will collapse on its own weight once he's removed from power. And the best way to remove Ruto from power, and this is documented, is patented historically since 1789, uh, the French Revolution, is people power. This is how it's been done. This is how the Bangladeshi did it. This is how the Sri Lankans did it. This is how every other society has done it. It cannot be done any other way. I know many will ask, how do we do it if we are not united? You don't need everybody united. That's another illusion. That's another distraction. The Cuban revolution was not brought by even a half of the population. The Bangladeshi revolution was not brought by even uh, uh, two million people. And, and how many people are in Bangladesh? You don't need 5% of Kenyans to remove Ruto from power. You just need 1 to 2 million people. That's a very small fraction of Nairobi's population. And really, you don't need anybody else anywhere else except in Nairobi. Ruto can be removed from power from Nairobi. Ruto will not be removed from power from Washington or from New York or from Toronto or from London. Ruto will be removed from power in Nairobi. So, so we should not dance around some of these things because the formula is well known and the strategy is scientific. That the moment you have a significant number of people protesting on the street, even the police cannot intervene because we have less than 250,000 policemen in Kenya. So if you have 2 million people, the police cannot shoot. Remember, on June 25th this year, Ruta had already fled Nairobi. Ruta was not in Nairobi. He had already run away. He was in Iraq, waiting to go to Eldoret, and then probably from there, Uganda. So even on the 25th of June, Ruta was ready to leave power. The problem is that we were infiltrated. And we had voices through NIS announcing that people should not march to state house, people should go home. These are the things we have to deal with. These are internal contradictions that we must deal with. These are the contradictions that were not there in Bangladesh. The students were being killed on the street. And by the way, more died in Bangladesh than died in Kenya. But they stayed on the street every single day and they liberated their country. And the rest is history. And we can see the transformation of Bangladesh with our own eyes right now in real time. And they were not shouting at their counterparts that were not in Bangladesh. Like the person presiding over the transition was not even in Bangladesh. He's some old retired uh, professor that was living in Paris. The same thing happened in Iran. The Ayatollah was in Paris when the Iranian revolution took place. It was not in Iran. So a lot of people are ignorant of history and are ignorant about what is happening. Revolutions happen all over the world organically, but in a disciplined, focused, fearless manner. But it has to be consistent. Revolutionaries must identify who their enemy is or enemies are. 
singularly and not be confused and not be distracted. Anybody telling us that we, peti we, we petition, we collect a, a million signatures to remove Ruto is either working for Ruto or for NIS or from the international uh, intelligence agencies or is just a fool because you're not going to remove Ruto through petitions. Anybody who tell you that, oh, we just need one member of parliament to bring an impeachment uh, motion is also either fool or working for Ruto, or working for the international intelligence agencies. Because Ruto will not be impeached. He owns the members of parliament. He has given them the freedom to loot the illegal uh, CDF as much as they want. So as far as they are concerned, the person who, has giving them, who is giving them millions, hundreds of millions of public money every year to loot is their boss. They are going to salute at Ruto. They are going to worship him. They are going to kneel before him. They are going to kiss him. They are going to do everything he wants.